Tucson. I'm Sophie Gibson Rush, and this is Strong Sound. I'm here to talk with you about local music and what it's good for. At any given time, there are a handful of Tucson bands with great potential. To me, potential means a lot more than musical talent. Talent is wonderful, but we no longer live in an economy where talent is talented and simply waits to be discovered. To have potential today, you have to have some business savvy, some marketing chops, an aesthetic vision, an online presence, and of course, you have to be willing to work like crazy. This list of requirements sounds like suffocating distraction from creativity to some artists, which brings me to record labels. What do they do? How can they help? And are they scam artists and scoundrels? So before I started working on this segment, I really didn't understand how record labels worked. My go-to conversation was how major labels scam artists and, the artists and that sucks. That's true, there are plenty of instances of huge music celebrities going bankrupt because of unfair or even criminal contracts. After reading up on it though, my understanding is that record labels often spell positive change for an artist's career. And beyond that, we have several local record labels popping up in Tucson. Baby Gas Mask, Commercial Appeal, Hocus Bogus, and Baby Tooth are made up of our friends, neighbors, and sweethearts. My sense is that they have little interest in deceit and more in benefiting local musicians. So before we dive into this brave new music scene, here are a couple of useful facts about record labels. There are major labels, and then there are indie labels. Quite a few indie labels are owned by major labels, or indie labels are a large conglomerate of indie indie labels. Today I'm going to deal mostly with indie labels and their structure. We no longer live in a culture of discovery or big breaks, as I said. This is no longer an industry where you can send your demo to the A&R department and some guy will listen to it and then throw it on his boss's desk. Record labels still accept submissions, but the chances of someone listening to your CD are pretty low. It's much better to focus on growing your reputation through your own talent, marketing, and releases. If you have a fan base, buzz, and ambition, chances are you have the capability of drawing the attention of an indie record label. Record labels want to know before they sign a band if it's a great investment. So what do record labels offer musicians that they can't do for themselves? Record labels offer an advance for expenses that musicians would regularly struggle to pay. Expenses like recording, production, or touring costs. This is an advance, so it's offered with the stipulation that it will be paid back. Think of it as an interest-free loan. That's the most important aspect of the whole relationship. The idea is that by lifting the financial pressure on musicians, they can relax, be more creative, and write that heroic album that will make everyone rich. Record labels also offer an invaluable connection to the music industry, from producers, to venues, to directors for music videos, to album artists, to the indispensable PR and marketing companies they employ. Record labels are there to present and nurture artists in order to make money. The list of services offered varies widely from label to label. Contracts are where it comes down to brass tacks. This is a legally binding agreement between artist and label. Every contract will be different, but essentially signing with a label will provide you with monetary advances, that interest-free loan I mentioned, to be paid back in full. Commonly, it's paid back through placement, album sales, or merchandise. The majority of the time, a label will own your masters. They work to get placement for the song on TV, film, advertisements, the World Wide Web, whatever. For many indie labels and artists, this is where there's real money-making potential. Depending on the contract, artists sometimes will have the opportunity to buy back their masters at the end of the term. This is what Jack White did with the White Stripes, and he got them before the prices skyrocketed. Smarty pants. It's good to look for protection for artists in the contracts, too. Spending caps on the record label are great if you don't want to end up paying back the $10,000 they spent on PR. Similarly, watch out for giant advances. All advances are against the future earning of the band. Read carefully is all I'm saying, and please do your research. 
It's a strange relationship between an artist and a label, but in the end, they want the same thing, to make the artist wildly successful. Most of the time, this relationship works out great for all. When they don't, well, Neil Young, who incidentally loved his label, said it best. Artists have a choice of what they can do. Artists who want to go at it alone should just do that. All right, on to the calendar for this weekend. Tonight is the 191 Tool Open House. This venue was recently acquired by the Rialto Theater, and it hits that sweet spot between booking famous touring bands and giving local bands a great stage to develop. Katie Haverly, Joe Novelli, and Gabriel Sullivan will perform tonight. Don't miss the KXCI jukebox along the Eastern Wall. KXCI put 100 hand-picked CDs into this gorgeous machine. Pop in a quarter and enjoy some of them. Anyone out there remember Scrappies, by the way? Also tonight, the not local but awesome Juilliard String Quartet, presented by Arizona Friends of Chamber Music, comes to the Leo Rich Theater. This is one of the top three string quartets in the country, and they're playing Beethoven, Mendelssohn, and a contemporary composer called Davidovsky. I also just learned this afternoon that this concert is sold out, so classical music lives! Thursday night, Hey Bucko plays at Tap and Bottle. The trio always makes the night better with their instrumental Western charisma. Grab a beer and you got the whole kit and caboodle right there. Bluegrass Babes Run Boy Run play at the Rialto on Friday. This is a crew of masters. Every single person in this band is an expert at their instrument, and it's riveting to see them live because they're so detailed and tight. They're enjoying a well-deserved international success, which puts them in a place in their career where they pretty much professionally tour all the time. So welcome home for a bit, you guys. While you're there, pick up their album, I Would Fly, which came out in September. Sunday is La Fiesta de Guad Guadalupe at De Grazia Gallery. The festival celebrates Mexico's patron saint with performances by weirdly talented mariachi and folklorico, folklorico kids, Domingo de Grazia's Spanish guitar band, a yaqui deer dance ceremony, and Las Posadas procession by Korea Magnet School students. I'm in. It sounds like a wonderful way to celebrate our strange border cultural hybrid. Tucson, it's always a pleasure. Email me, gibsonrushmusic at gmail.com, if you want me to consider including events or topics in this segment. For now, I'm off, but feel free to stick around and relish in some Run Boy Run. One, two, three.